Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. In this brand new Python game development series, you'll be learning how to create a tic-tac-toe AI using Pygame. As you can see, we have a game interface followed by an animation and then finally an end screen. Pretty cool stuff, so let's get right into our code. Okay, so before we begin, I'm gonna have to ask you to download all of these files from the link in the description below, which will take you to a Google Drive attachment where all of this is available um, to download all at once. So these files are basically the art which we're gonna use in the game. And I drew them myself and they're obviously pretty essential. In case you feel pretty confident, you can draw all of the stuff on your own but I would highly recommend you download uh, all of this because they've been fitted you know, to the length, and, uh, the length and breadth of the images and the particular sizes that we need to use. So I'm gonna assume that you've done all this um, when I'm starting here. And let me first begin by importing Pygame. So that's the module we obviously need. And after this, I'm gonna have a, um, a as a P. So the reason I'm doing this is so that every single time I type Pygame dot something, I could just type p.something instead and that would save me a whole lot of time. So now let me type in p.init which is going to initialize all the modules of Pygame and we can start to get into the first class. And this class is called square and within the square we're going to use it as a sprite and this just makes it easier to uh, move stuff and you know have clicks and all of that because uh, we just have access to a whole bunch of methods. So we can type in p.sprite dot sprite within the inheritance and when we're into this uh, you know def init method so def underscore underscore init uh, we will also have to init the super class so just type in super dot init and that error should go away now once you're into this we can first define a self dot width um, we'll set that to be 120 and also a self dot height which is equal to 120 now you might wonder, you know, if it's a square, why do we need a width and height? And you'd be perfectly right. We could just have a dim, but I just did it the first time. So I'm gonna do it the same way. So next, after we're done with these two things, we'll have a self.x. And before I set it to something, what I'm gonna do is go back up and make sure that when we're entering into this, or rather when we're creating an object of this class, I have to enter in a couple of parameters. So the first one, I will call it xid. The next one, I will call it YID, and I'll explain what these terms do in a second, just copy me. And the third one, I'll call this number, okay? There we go, I called it, yeah, number. So self.x is gonna be XID uh, multiplied by uh, self.width, okay? And uh, self.y is going to be YID multiplied by self.height. So XID and YID are just ways of identifying a square. So for example, just imagine a total tic-tac-toe board right here, and uh, we'd have nine total squares. So I'm gonna give the coordinate uh, right on top, the square right on top, a coordinate of one comma one, and the square on its right is going to be two comma one. So I'm just imagining a basic coordinate axis and x id comma y id is going to be that particular coordinate we'll give it. This just makes it easier when we are um, you know, placing the, uh, placing the squares in order so that it gets into an orderly format. So you don't really have to bother too much about it, it's just some simple stuff. Um, self dot number is simply the number we're identifying the square with. So the numbers are gonna be arranged as one, two, three for the squares on the top, uh, four, five, six, and seven, eight, nine, you know, the usual way. And we'll just have this to make sure that when we're checking for square winners, whether either the player or the computer is one, um, that number is gonna be pretty useful. So don't worry about that now, let's get into the next one. So this one is gonna be called self.content, and this is gonna contain what is inside the square. Now originally the square is going to be blank, meaning there's not an X or an O inside it. So we'll just type in an empty space like this, okay? Next let's type in self.number and let's just have it, you know, as, um, as a, not a variable, but within this class. So we'll set this to number. And uh, next let's type in self.image. And here we need a bunch of, uh, we have a bunch of images. And the image that we need here is called blank.png here, okay? So I'll have to load in the images down and that is what I will do here, 
I'm going to call this blank image. So blank underscore image is equal to, and to load in the image, we need to type in p.image.load uh, followed by blank.png, just like that. Uh, now I'm going to load in the X image. So X image, and then here we can just put in, uh, I think it's x.png. So it should be this one. Let me just check quickly. Yup, it is this. Okay, there we go. So now I'm going to duplicate this line once again. And this final image is going to be O image. So this is going to be O.png. Very straightforward. And I'm also going to down, um, not download, but load the background image. So I'm going to say background is equal to p.image.load followed by background.png like that. Okay, so these four are the images. Uh, as far as the square is concerned, the first image that will be within the square, the square is basically gonna be blank. So I'm just gonna say it is equal to blank image. And after that, we need to write a couple of more lines of code. So first of all, we need to make sure that the image is transformed so that the square has the correct width and height, which we mentioned right here as the two attributes. So to do that, you can say self dot image is equal to p.transform.scale and here we can type in first the image that we want to scale which is in this case self.image itself and we'd have to type in the new width and height here. In this case it's going to be self.width and self.height. So there we go. This is going to be pretty much it and the last thing we need to do is get a rectangle in order to move the entire image. So that's fairly straightforward. Self.rect is equal to self.image.getRect. And that is pretty much all we need for the init method. So the update method now is very, very simple. So we have def update. And here all we're doing is going to, uh, moving the center of the rectangle to a particular location. So we can say self.rect.center and that is basically what the what these self.x and self.y attributes do. We can just say self.rect.center is equal to, and you need to put this within a tuple, self.x, comma, self.y. And there you go. That is pretty much all you need within the square method, uh, the square class for this video. There's going to be a lot more in the uh, upcoming videos, so you would have to um, do way more than this. But in this video, just to make sure you know the square gets on the screen and we can see the entire board, um, this will be all you need to do. Okay, so before we get into setting up the window, what I'll do is quickly resize the background, okay? So we'll have a background um, is equal to p.transform.scale. I'm basically using the same thing um, which I did earlier with the square image. But in this case, what I'll need to do is once again use the same background image but I will need to scale it to the width and height of the screen. Now I haven't defined it yet, but I will do so in these two variables. So I'll have width and height just like this, and we'll just resize it this way. So now we can, you know, define all of that stuff. Um, the errors will go away in a second, don't worry about that. So let's start with width of the screen. We're defining, you know, the screen dimensions now. So width is gonna be 500. And I'm actually going to use um, the same value for the height as well. So the screen itself is going to be a square, nothing wrong with that. So let's set that up. So now we have the width and height. Uh, we can set up the window itself. I'm going to call it win. And to do that, you can say p.display.set mode. And after this, we just have to type within, uh, within a tuple the x and y value. So I'm going to type in width, comma, height, just like this. And after that, we'll set up a caption as well. So p.display.setCaption, and this is just a title which will appear at the top of the window. You know, you can see on my PyCharm window here, we have tic-tac-toe AI part one. It's just gonna be that way on the PyCharm window itself. I'm gonna call this tic-tac-toe, no need for an AI, let's just call it that. And finally, we need to set up a clock to make sure our game progresses properly. And we don't have, you know, we're waiting basically on a frame timer rather than on a time timer. I'm not sure if you entirely get the reference, but this is pretty important. So we can say clock is equal to p.time.clock followed by open and close brackets. And uh, within the main loop, which we haven't got to yet, so I will uh, type that in right now. So run is equal to true. And while run, this is the main loop I was talking about. Here, we need to make sure that the clock basically ticks, okay? So we can type in clock.tick, uh, clock.tick, 
followed by I'm going to progress the game at 60 frames per second. So you can type in a 60 right there. Right, so next we need to make sure that um, the window can close when we want it to. Uh, to do that, let's get all the events that are possible. So we can say for event np.event uh, dot get and uh, after this within this for loop we can say if event dot oops if event dot type is equal to and i'm not typing too well today but let's continue so if event dot type is equal to p dot quit which is when we are closing the window in this case what i'll do is exit this loop so i'll say run is equal to false and this is going to make us get out of the run loop um, next, what I will do is make sure that all the screen updates are constantly happening. And I'm going to do this in the form of a method. I'm just going to call this update like that. Okay. And what I'll do now is scroll up. Let me just uh, define the method here. So def update like this. And within this, I'm just going to type in the last line of code first. And that is p dot display dot update. Uh, yeah like this so update and that's it so there'll be a couple of more things i'm going to add obviously with the square class and stuff but as of now this should remove the arrow from there so let's now start defining the square groups and also the square list so i'm going to start by defining the group so square underscore group is equal to and here we need to create a group so that you know the sprite can be um displayed on the screen so square group is equal to, let me just create an empty group. So p dot sprite dot group, just like that. And after this, I'm also gonna create a list. Now you may wonder why we need this list, but trust me, this is gonna help us a lot later on. So just say squares is equal to an empty list, just with an open and closed square brackets. And you'll start to see where this is going in the next video. So as of now, this is what you will need. And uh, now let's start, oops, let's start defining, let's start adding squares to that group. So I'll have num is equal to one, and num is basically gonna be the, um, the actual parameter which we'll enter in uh, to satisfy the formal parameter number which I've defined here. So you'll see uh, how I'm gonna do that. So where's that? Yeah, here, num is equal to one. And after this, we'll get into a for loop. So I'll say for y in range, Oops, so for y in range, and I'll type in one comma four, and then I will type in for x in range, one comma four, okay? Just like this. So now you may wonder why it's one comma four and not one comma three, because there are three x's and three y's, giving a total of nine squares. But um, the range works in such a way that the first value is considered, but the last value is not. So this will be from one to three, and the reason I have, uh, I have y in the outer loop and x in the inner loop is because I'm going to do it in a horizontal manner. So it's going to be x that is changing first. And to make sure that we are changing the x first, we need x in the inner loop. So hopefully that makes sense. So within the inner loop, we will have sq, which is just, you know, an, uh, an object. We, it'll keep changing every single time. But we'll have sq is equal to square. And within this, we need to type in a couple of actual parameters, like I mentioned. So X ID is going to be X, Y ID is going to be Y, and the number is going to be num. We also need to add this to the group, which is the whole point of the group. So we can type in, uh, oops, square group, square group dot add, and we can just put in SQ within that, uh, within the open and close brackets. Um, what I will also do is make sure that we append uh, squares dot append so we're basically adding this square to the list and this is going to help us a lot okay so you'll start to see this list is useful and i know it doesn't make sense right now but you will start to see that um next we need to make sure that this num is constantly changing because uh, we have the for loop the x and y are going to change but num is going to stay as one unless we you know change it and we want to make sure each square has a unique number which is from one to nine and to do that, just type in num plus is equal to one. So we're just incrementing the number, which is gonna be exactly what we need. All right, so finally, now let's get into that update method and finish up for this video. So let's start by uh, first of all, blitting the background so that our background is nice and clear. Uh, I believe the background is just a single color of light pink. Yep, that is it. 
So we'll just blit that. So win.blit background. And remember that the background is fitted to the width and height. So we can just split it right on top so that it you know matches across perfectly. And in case you don't know, uh, the part of the image um, that we'll consider uh, that we have to put to set the X and Y is the top left except you know for the sprite where i've specified you know it's center but generally since this isn't a sprite the image is just gonna we're just gonna consider the top left and just like the screen it's uh, top left needs to be at 0 comma 0 and that is the coordinate we need to enter in so win.plit background 0 comma 0 and after that we can you know do the ch um, basically use the square group so square group dot draw first and this will draw the squares onto the window and we can now just update so that we can see the square group. So square group dot update. And this should make sure everything is set up perfectly. So now let's test it out. I'm going to hit the run key. This should take a second to get started. So hello from the Pygame community. It opens up here. And uh, there we go. I'm not entirely sure why this isn't opening. Okay, there we go. It just wasn't responding because I guess my system was overloaded. Um, never mind that. All right, so our squares show up pretty perfectly and that is going to be it for this video. In the next video, we'll probably get into entering the squares and after that, we'll start to get into the AI and the associated changes. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.